and revitalizing urban port areas located outside the dikes, strengthening the city's position as a main port, and building high-quality homes and offices. We are making the whole development climate-proof by taking climate adaptation measures as we design public space. We have no intention of keeping our expertise to ourselves. We are glad to share our knowledge with others. For example, the Netherlands is helping Indonesia respond to the collapse of a dam. With our help, the Indonesian authorities are drawing up and implementing a plan to inspect around 200 reservoirs in the Jakarta area. And at the same time, a dredging project has recently been completed in Jakarta. The project's aim was to demonstrate small-scale dredging techniques with extensive communi community participation. The project started on the 1st of August in 2008, and the dredges have now been turned over to Indonesia the training has been completed successfully. Dutch companies and research institutes are also helping Indonesia protect coastal peat areas and low-lying farmland. The aim is to strike a balance between environmental conservation and more efficient agriculture. Here, adaptation and mitigation go hand in hand. In New Orleans, Dutch know-how is helping to build stronger coast defenses using what they call the Delta Dyke concept. And we recently concluded a far-reaching partnership with Vietnam. Our two countries have geographically a great deal in common, so there is much to learn from one another. We are trading lessons learned in the Mekong Delta for expertise from the Dutch Delta and vice versa. With all these national and international projects underway, you can understand why I am so delighted about extending the knowledge network of Delta countries and regions. International cooperation, sharing knowledge, and exchanging ideas about water management and spatial policy are vital for peace, security, and prosperity in our deltas. It is our responsibility that all, this, all of this happens. And by founding the Delta Alliance, we are proving that we take this task seriously. And we are putting the adap adaptation agenda into effect. This global partnership should lead to excellent projects. The success of these projects will lead to international agreements on climate, trade, and biodiversity. Only when agreements are signed and sealed will we be able to persuade companies and funds to earmark money for our work. I wish the Delta Alliance every success with its joint projects and hope that more countries will join us. In view of the ambitions that have been expressed in the past few days, I am confident that the Alliance will grow to be a lasting international partnership, which will carry on as programs and governments come and go. Thank you. Well, I think Minister Huizinga said the exact words that are the, the, the motif of today, sign and seal. May I invite you, Minister Huizinga, to be the first to put your signature on this most significant document.
one down and many, many, many more over the whole world to go. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister Huizinga, for this uh, important symbolic act. I'd like to give the floor now to Kay Slingerland, the chairman of the Delta Alliance. Your Excellency, Mrs. Tineke Huizinga. It was last December at COP15 in Copenhagen that I had the honor to introduce you and announce you at that moment as our Vice Minister in Public Works and Water Management. This was also a type of pre-launch of Delta Alliance. And I have introduced you at that moment as a Vice Minister who was much more important than our Prime Minister. Because being a Vice Minister in Water Works you are really responsible to keep our country safe for flooding because if in the short run our country would be flooded, then the Prime Minister does not have any country to govern anymore. In the meantime, you became Minister of Housing, Spatial Planning, but for today I would think mainly of Environment. And I think this is even a more important position because now you are not only safeguarding our country for the short run, but the environment also helps us to survive in the long run. I would really like to thank you very much for supporting Delta Alliance, not only by helping us at the pre-launch in Copenhagen and at the launch here in Rotterdam, but also by being the first person signing the Delta Alliance declaration. And I would think, ladies and gentlemen, that all of you are hoping that you may sign that declaration as well. And the good news for today is that this is the case. Don't run now to the front of the room. You will get the opportunity to sign the Delta, Delta Alliance declaration after this meeting in the central hall during the reception. We do have these days a fantastic conference. We are gathering a lot of information we get presentations of a lot of research results. We all collect ideas that we could make use of when we are back home with the problems and the challenges that we have all in the countries where we work. And we have fantastic possibilities for networking these days. And I can say networking globally because from all parts of the world, people are represented here. And I do not know how in your life that normally goes, but when you will be back on Monday in your office, I would be afraid that the fantastic atmosphere that we have here these days, within an hour, is back to normal business. And you will be busy with the day-by-day -day nonsenses that take us off the street normally. And now Delta Alliance more or less is wanting to be a continuing conference, to be a community that keeps us in touch with each other, that keeps us exchanging information, exchanging research results, exchanging experience in how to apply them and how to improve the deltas worldwide. And that is the goal of Delta Alliance. I think in several workshops these days, this was underlined by examples of several deltas that had similarities, that had lessons learned that could be applied in other deltas as well. But I have to stress that deltas is more than just low-laying coastal areas that are suffering from climate change because they have more severe floods. It is more than climate change. It is population growth. It is economic and industrial activities. It is more than coastal cities. Also rural deltas and inner deltas are taking part at Delta Alliance. It is people living in the deltas, but it is also food production that takes place in the deltas vital infrastructure that is in deltas, economic real estate, and do not forget about the rich biodiversity in the deltas. It is more than earth science and civil engineering. Many other fields of expertise are, of, uh, are necessary to overcome the problems and to pick up the challenges in the deltas worldwide. And it is more than only science and policy. I think these days science and policy are well discussed, but also private companies, also educators.